Hello friends, welcome to the channel. My name is John Slop, and we have arrived at yet another Rush Studio album, Snakes and Arrows, uh, released in 2007, five years after Vapor Trails, and uh, three years after their R30 anniversary tour, which we will be watching at some point. Uh, now, reading the wiki for this album a little bit seems... Uh, each member spent a lot of time working online with each other as they were in different locations. Uh, I didn't read a lot, but um, just from the gist of what the wiki was saying, uh, very interesting, right? But um, anyway, if you are watching this on YouTube, you can find this album already reacted to on Patreon at patreon.com slash John Slop. Uh, if you're feeling generous, head on over there and subscribe so you can get Rush videos early. Uh, all right, people, let us get ready for some rush. First track, Far Cry.
Oh, okay. So before we start the next song, I just got to get some thoughts out. Wow. Very thankful to hear the comeback of the Lifeson chord, right? Like <laughs> I heard that. It was just, it feels like we're back in like hemispheres or something. This is, oh, wow. What a throwback, dude. Neil's drumming is like beastly on this. His kit is just pounding through, dude. Um, I love Getty's uh, voice as well. Um, I love how he's uh, doing some melodies with himself, uh, like usual. I love the uh, odd time signature for the intro and for uh, some of the other parts of the song. There was a, a very cool time signature that I couldn't get down. It was uh, very chaotic. Yeah, uh, it's like we're kind of heading back to a, a certain era of Rush with this one. This is, this one's awesome. This was a lot, this was a lot of fun. All right. So now we're going to jump into, um, Ooh, when should we check out the lyrics, dude? Yeah. I feel like we got to check out the lyrics after each song, give each song the respective, uh, lyrical analysis while the sound is still fresh. All right. So that one was Far Cry. Pariah dogs and wandering madmen barking at strangers and speaking in tongues. The ebb and flow of tidal fortune. Electrical changes are charging up the young. All right, so let's think about that. I'm really going to need y'all's help with this one, dude, because Neil is just getting smarter and more intricate, more knowledgeable, and I am still the same John Slop. Uh, but thankfully, I have my friends in the comments to help decipher. All right, uh, let's read this one more time. Pariah dogs and wandering madmen. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's, that's us. Barking at strangers and speaking in tongues. Interesting, all right. The ebb and flow of tidal fortune. Electrical changes are charging up the young. Yeah, how fortune seems to ebb and flow, all right? Electrical changes are charging up the young. Uh, ele electronic advancement is what that means. Uh, the ebb and flow of tidal fortune, is that just a comment on how it seems to be that way? It's a far cry from the world we thought we'd inherit. It's a far cry from the way we thought we'd share it. You can almost feel the current flowing. You can almost see the circuits blowing. All right, so it's a far cry from the world we thought we'd inherit. Uh, this is talking about like, um, you know, I'm not too sure on baby boomer like uh, mentalities, but uh, I guess, yeah, they grew up uh, thinking the world was going to be a certain way. They were promised something, right? Is kind of the gist. A big, a big... It was like a, it was like a big thing, dude. I need to do my research on that. It's a far cry from the way we thought we'd share it. You can almost feel the current flowing. You can almost see the circuits blowing. Yeah, you know the circuits blowing. Uh, like it's that's that's a bad thing. So you can see almost bad things happening. You know, just <laughs> rudimentary in my analysis. One day I feel I'm on top of the world, and the next it's falling in on me. I can get back on. I can get back on. One day I feel I'm ahead of the wheel, and the next it's rolling over me. I can get back on. I can get back on. Whirlwind life of faith and betrayal. Rise in danger. In anger, my bad, not danger. Fall back and repeat. Slow degrees on the dark horizon. Full moon rising lays silver at your feet. Okay. What does this particular part mean? Slow degrees on the dark horizon. Full moon rising lays silver at your feet. You can almost see the circle growing. You can almost feel the planets glowing. One day I fly through a crack in the sky. And the next, it's falling in on me. I can get back on. I can get back on. Interesting. So this part. One day I fly through a crack in the sky. And the next, it's falling on me. The sky is falling on you? I can get back on, I can get back on. Wow. 
So I think the gist of this song is uh, right in this little part right here. It's a far cry from the world we thought we'd inherit. It's a far cry from the way we thought we'd share it. Uh, very symbolic, very poetic. Please uh, help help me understand the full meaning of this song. It's very, very symbolic, just like the rest of his poems, dude. Just knowing that he's the one that just writes this alone and then gives it to Getty, and then Getty's like, all right, I will find a way to sing this. That is a very interesting like way of working like being a singer that doesn't write their own lyrics that's very interesting right but it works so well all right we are moving in to the second song uh what is it armor and sword
Oh man. This was this was so good. This one was so good. It was a bit heavier than the first one, right? Uh we had just Neil's pounding kit like in the first one, but this time we entered with such a cool cool drum intro by Neil. Uh and uh Alex's guitar just adds so much so much oh i love the acoustic guitar in this and i love how there was the section where it started off with the acoustic and just the bass and the uh, percussion going and it was just really groovy and it just built up dude this song was great uh this song uh this is how neil like named the uh, album right here uh, during writing this song armor and sword uh I don't fully understand the story, right? Apparently, uh, he got some inspiration from, like, Snakes and Ladders and, uh, something in Arrows. What was it? Slings and Arrows from a Shakespeare play, Hamlet. Right, uh, let's see. It says here, Peart wrote that the title was chosen to describe the good kind of faith as being armor while the bad kind of faith is a sword. Uh, interesting. I don't... Yeah, no. All right, that's that's really cool. And then it's also based on a board game, the game of Snakes and Arrows. There's a Indian game called Leela. Very interesting. You know, maybe somebody can help put those pieces together. Uh, I was just skimming. But that all seems really cool, right? That song was great. I was rocking out a few times there, dude. Uh, and yeah, I just love um, Getty's voice during the chorus. It was like very haunting. I love the melody he chose for this song. All right, let's uh, check out the lyrics. The snakes and arrows, a child is heir to are enough to leave a thousand cuts. We build our defenses, a place of safety and to leave the darker places unexplored. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need your guys' help with this one. And I'm just going to read through. You know, I don't want to spend too much time trying to personally figure out what it means, but I would really like your help. Sometimes the fortress is too strong, or the love is too weak. What should have been our armor becomes a sharp and angry sword. And angry sword. Our better natures seek elevation, a refuge for the coming night. No one gets to their heaven without a fight. We hold beliefs as a consolation, a way to take us out of ourselves. Meditation or medication, a comfort or a promised reward. Sometimes that spirit is too strong or the flesh is too weak. Sometimes the need is just too great for the solace we seek. I, I kind of understand. Our minds want too much. The suit of shining armor becomes a keen and bloody sword, a refuge for the coming night, a future of eternal light. No one gets to their heaven without a fight. Confused alarms of struggle and flight, blood is drained of color by the flashes of artillery light. No one gets to their heaven without a fight. The battle flags are flown at the feet of a god unknown. No one gets to their heaven without a fight. Sometimes the damage is too great or the will is too weak. What should have been our armor becomes a sharp, and burning sword. Now that's the one line I need really hard clarification on. What should have been our armor becomes a sharp and burning sword. What exactly is the armor that he is talking about? Uh, all right, I think I get the gist, right? Armor and sword, you build up an armor and it becomes your sword. <clears throat> we build our defenses, a place of safety, 
and leave the darker places unexplored, right? Talking about how you build up defenses instead of dealing with the darker places trauma, so to speak, right? I think I'm starting to get it. Sometimes the fortress is too strong or the love is too weak. What should have been our armor becomes sharp and angry sword. So your defenses become an offense. That is your defense. I get it. I get it. Very, very, very cool use of imagery and uh, symbolism, dude. This is this is very interesting. I love this song. Uh, let me know if I missed anything in this particular song. Uh, let me see. No one gets to their heaven without a fight. That is like the most recurring theme in this or sentence in this song. Uh, it seems like that is like the main point, right? All right. Yeah, I think we're just going to move on. Let me know if you have any other thoughts on this song. Let me know if I missed anything. Uh, I would love to know your thoughts on this particular song. Armor and sword. All right, and we're going to move on to the third track. Working Them Angels. <laughs>
even though I really like that ring out. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, before we get into that song, just let me think, dude. I loved the different amount of stringed instruments I heard. There was a 12 string, there was an acoustic, there was like a like a mandolin or a that could have even been like a banjo or something, dude. That sounded really cool. Uh yeah, Neil's playing around with different time signatures, dude, really kept me on my toes. Uh the song was a lot of fun. Uh I loved Alex's um uh, just Al everybody was playing around a lot, like having a lot of fun. Um this was just like a really long like fun kind of mellow vibe, you know, it didn't get too too crazy like um like intense feeling this one was kind of chiller right even though the guitars went pretty hard at some points no this one was just fun working them angels over time very interesting really excited to figure out what that means now yeah there's just something special about you know neil knows how to keep the pace of a song like really well and knows how to keep us entertained like no matter the length dude of the song like these boys just have a magic together there will be no other group that knows like that knows like the secret touch dude neil just knows how to accent to give like so many little accents to make little moments very special dude like i can't take enough time to like point out each and every single little special thing neil does to really make each song just stand out and feel a lot special dude all right let's uh check out the lyrics for working them angels i'm very very interested driving away to the east and into the past history recedes in my rear view mirror carried away on a wave of music down a desert road memory humming at the heart of a factory town all right pretty self-explanatory so far all my life i've been working them angels over time Riding and driving and living, so close to the edge. Working them angels, working them angels, working them angels, over time. Very interesting, what angels could he be speaking about? Riding through the range of light to the wounded city, filling my spirit with the wildest wish to fly. Taking the high road, taking that high to the wounded city, Memory strumming at the heart of a moving picture. Very interesting. So, off the top of my head, I'm already thinking, of course, he must mean the angels of the people he's lost. And then we have a callback to moving picture, dude. Moving pictures, but, you know, moving picture, that's a movie, right? Memory strumming at the heart of a moving picture. All this time I've been working them angels over time, riding and driving and flying just over the edge, working them angels, working them angels, working them angels over time. Driving down the razor's edge between the past and the future, turn up the music and smile, get carried away on the songs and stories of vanished times, memory drumming at the heart of an English winter, memories beating at the heart of an African village. What does that mean in particular? All this time I've been working them angels over time, riding and driving and living, so close to the edge. Working them angels, working them angels, working them angels over time. Working them angels, working them angels. Very, very interested. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking this is like a story about Okay, I don't want to assume, right? But like, people say a lot that Neil doesn't really write about personal things too much. So maybe this is still... I'm trying to like... I want to do assume this is about him driving and confronting or having the angels of his loved ones like talk to him, give him comfort. That's what it means by working the angels, right? But I certainly think that might not be the case. This might just be like a symbolic kind of thing that he's working through uh in his own mind you know as as a song so i think we shouldn't take it literally driving away to the east and into the past you know lots of interpretations right he's looking to eastern philosophy 
uh, and into his past, confronting his things. History recedes in my rearview mirror, carried away on a wave of music down a desert road. Music is like a comfort, carried away by it. But the desert road, I don't know what he could mean, dude. If anybody wants to give me just the rundown, what does this song mean? I feel like there's so much symbolism, right? The wounded city, riding through the range of light to the wounded city, filling my spirit with the wildest wish to fly. A lot of times he's mentioned wanting to fly, dude. This has been a recurring dream of Neil, I believe, of wanting to fly. What do you have to think of this song? Uh, you know, one last little mention. What uh, memory drumming at the heart of an English winter? Memories beating at the heart of an African village. Are these places he visited? I would love to know your thoughts on this song. And uh, all right. So with that, I think we're going to move on to the next song. The Larger Bowl. So much the same like I always hear Why such different fortunes and fates Some of us live in a cloud of fear Some live behind iron gates Why such different fortunes and fates Some are blessed and some are cursed some live behind iron gates While others see only the worst Some are blessed and some are cursed The golden one was scarred from death While others only see the worst Such a lot of pain on the earth can never be changed Such a lot of pain on this earth It's somehow so badly arranged Some things can never be changed Some reasons will never come clear It's somehow so badly arranged It was so much the same like I always hear Some are blessed and some are Start from the 
such a lot of pain on the earth. What's the song going to keep going? Hold on. Hold on. Is that the start of the next song? One second. 20, 50. Yeah, that is the start of the next song. All right. Uh, so that song, I love how hard they're going into the acoustic guitar on this album. Just, it sounds so, so great. Like, I just love how clean it sounds. They're really conjuring these kind of haunting kind of sounds on this one. Uh, the chorus on this one seemed very, like, uh, classic rock 70s, right? We had, like, a like a tambourine, it sounded like. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, this song was a lot of fun. We had a lot of cool moments. Uh, uh, Alex's uh, solo, that was a great solo. It sounded a lot like... It sounded perfect for the song. I was going to say it sounded different than a lot of solos he's done in the past. Um, and yeah, we had a lot of fun drum percussion moments from Neil. Um, he does like the funnest fills, right? <laughs> uh, and I love how Getty opened up singing like so, so like sweetly. He's like, he's already opened up a couple of songs on this album with a kind of a very soft, angelic opening. Uh, all right, so this song was fun. You know, it was a, a lot mellower than the first couple of songs so far. Uh, in the first few songs. Uh, so this one was The Larger Bowl. All right, so let's check out the lyrics for The Larger Bowl. This one's actually called The Larger Bowl. Parentheses, a pantoum. Uh, we will learn what a pantoum is after we read the lyrics. If we're so much the same, like I always hear, why such different fortunes and fates? Some of us live in a cloud of fear, some live behind iron gates. The disparity between, uh, like, rich and just poor people. Why such different fortunes and fates? Some are blessed and some are cursed. Some live behind iron gates, while others see only the worst. Some are blessed and some are cursed, the golden one or scarred from birth, while others see only the worst. Such a lot of pain on the earth, the golden one or scarred from birth. Some things can never be changed. Such a lot of pain on this earth, it's somehow so badly arranged. The golden one or a scarred from birth, meaning like, you know, there's just a black and white. You're either, you're either fortunate enough to be saved or you're either scarred from birth, dude. Very, putting it bluntly. Uh, some things can never be changed. Some reasons will never come clear. It's somehow so badly arranged. If we're so much the same, like I always hear. Excuse me. Some are blessed and some are cursed. The golden one or scarred from birth. While others only see the worst. Such a lot of pain on the earth. Excuse me. All right. Yeah, no, I think it's very clear what this song's trying to say. It's like, yeah, just speaking on what I mentioned just how we have such a clear separation from people who can afford to do whatever they want to the people who have to scrounge. Uh, yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, no, it's, a uh, like what classism, uh, capitalism doesn't help. Um, uh, a pantoum is composed of quatrains. The second and fourth lines of the first stanza are the first and third lines of the second, and so on. Whoa, interesting. In the final stanza, the last line is the same as the first line of the poem. And the third line is the same as the third line of the first stanza. Very interesting. That is cool. You know, uh, that's just cool. A little artistic way to format your poem. Uh, very interesting. Uh, so, let's see. If so, on in the final stanza, the last line is the same as the first line. Let's test it, dude. Such a lot of pain on the earth. Wait. 
In the final stanza, the last line is the same as the first line of the poem, and the third line is the same as the third line of the first stanza. I don't know if that's actually right here. Anyways, people are going to have to help point that out for me. Uh, all right. Uh, so, yeah, no, what do you think of that song? Uh, it was it was great. You know, I liked the like folk feeling it had.